So after using the spoken interface for ChatGPT using the smartphone app for a week or two, I started to wonder, would it be possible to get a sort of a broad liberal arts education just by talking with ChatGPT? Or would it be a useful tool for getting a broad education? Um, so what do I mean by a liberal arts education? Um, there a lot People have a lot of different understandings of it. I guess what I want to say is... Uh, to get a broad base of knowledge about a variety of subjects um, that are important for living in the world um, in any capacity um, and that are um, not necessarily practical, not necessarily applied, but they do cover both the humanities and the social sciences and the, the physical sciences as well as subjects like philosophy, maybe theology, and other subjects like that. So it's the notion that a liberal arts education is something that one acquires usually when one is young, um, and that it continues to pay benefits for you. It continues to pay off for the following decades of your life. Um, I'll let you think about that, whether that definition is good, whether a liberal arts education is actually valuable. But um, I decided to test it with um, uh, ChatGPT. And I guess if I should mention that one, one of the reasons I wanted, uh, I, I got the idea to do this with the spoken interface is that uh, most people, when they talk about a liberal arts education or somebody having a broad education, it includes not only knowledge. Knowledge, of course, is important. Knowing facts, knowing dates and people and history and, and uh, principles and things like this. But it's also the ability to think about those, to draw connections between facts, to think critically about the, the veracity of various things. So that those critical thinking skills are also important. And so the reason I got this idea was that in conversations, spoken conversations with ChatGPT, I really felt that I was being challenged to think clearly and to think on my feet and that it what it said to me was very clear and logical and precise. And in order to converse with it, I felt that I had to be on my toes. I felt, I felt that even at this age, I was getting, I was, I was maybe getting a little bit smarter. And so, um, so I, I've done some tests. Um, and you can see in the linked web page, um, three of the conversations I had with it. Um, I have the audio recording as well as a, a summary that ChatGPT made of those conversations, and the full transcript is available there as well too. Um, and so um, I, it's it, people will disagree. People have different opinions about this, but I personally find this to be a very very intriguing tool for becoming <laughs> smarter. I, um, one thing I should mention is that um, I use the custom instructions functions of GAPT to give it a setting of uh, who I am and how I wanted it to behave. I used the setting that I was um, an 18-year-old who wanted to get an education without going to college. Um, I'm not quite 18. Um, but I, I also, um, after testing it with a little bit, ChatGPT has a tendency to be too nice and to apologize and to ask personal questions and things like that. And so I gave it a lot of um, instructions of saying, don't apologize, don't list things by number, um, other things like that. Um, and they have those, the instructions I used, which are at the bottom of, the, of that page, were only partly successful. Um, it continued to ask me more questions than I wanted it to. Um, and it continued to ramble on a bit, a little bit longer than I wanted it to. But um, it's possible that you can experiment with it. Um, one of the things about prompting these large language models is that it's more of an art than a science, at least at this stage. So um, if you want to see more of it, first of all, you can click the link, look at the page, listen to some you know, parts of the, of the conversations I had with it, um, and then try it yourself. Uh, try it yourself and see what you think think about that. Try and have ask other people to try it and see what they think about that. Is could 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 a person who can't afford to go to college or can't um uh, doesn't have time to go to college, could they just by having regular conversations with an LLM like this and following up on those conversations by doing outside reading and things like that, to what extent would a person be able to get a, a broad 
education that would be valuable for them in whatever walk of life they pursue. Um, and to what extent would it be inadequate? Um, uh, would, to what extent would they, would they still be missing out on the education that one gets in interpersonal communication? And one more question is, to, to what extent could this be a, a supplement for uh, traditional education? Could people going to school, um, to a regular school, also use this to study on their own as a supplement to that school? Would that, would that, that be valuable? These are all very interesting questions, um, and, I, and I encourage anybody who's interested in them to pursue them, to think about them, and to share what they learn with others. So thank you very much.